Hello and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going back to hardcore antiques, vintage and collectibles. And we're going to have a look at what has sold in the first couple of weeks in August. And compare that to last August to see if there's been any shortfall in sales due to the cost of living crisis and the usual summer slowdown. First thing to point out is it's about 35 degrees today, so I've got the window open and you're going to hear passing traffic, kids playing in the street, whatever. But I'm um, sorry about that, hopefully it won't interfere with the overall sound quality. Um, it, there's no doubt about it, when I compare my figures uh, this August to last August, that there has been a downturn. and it, I'm actually, I've actually sold about one third in the first couple of weeks of August compared to what I sold last year in August. Now, this is down to two reasons. The usual summer slowdown, but there's a, there's a reduction in sales mainly because of the cost of living crisis. And if you're in the UK, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're an international viewer, I honestly don't know whether you're experiencing the same cost of living crisis. In other words, inflation, price of people's fuel, energy, shopping, going through the roof. So in my niche market of antiques, vintage and collectibles, it's not top of their list of priorities. At the end of the day, in a baking hot August, when money's tight and you're looking at how you're going to pay the next bill, Buying, I don't know, an antique copper planter isn't top of everybody's list of priorities. I completely understand that. So, in part, I expect it every year with the summer slowdown, but there's definitely been, it's been compounded by the cost of living crisis. That may ease off as people come to terms with prices going up and adjust their budgets, but I do have concerns that with additional energy price increases coming up, I believe, sort of towards the end of uh, August, maybe September, and then rumours of more increases next year, then this downturn, downturn, I should say, might be uh, longer, over a longer period than the short term. But as dealers, you have to take the rough with the smooth, and um, as the name implies, deal with it. So, without going into any more detail in that, because we all face different circumstances and it all affects people differently, let's have a look at some of the sales I've made in the first two weeks of August, bearing in mind everything I've just talked about. I won't dwell on each one, there's quite a few, um, but I will just give you a brief bit of detail about each item and show you some uh, decent photographs as well. That's probably much better than looking at the uh, my eBay shop sold orders screen because that also contains information about individual buyers and I'm sure they don't want to be uh, their details plastered all across YouTube. So first up, I sold, this was an interesting little sale. It's a small pewter tankard, and it had an inscription of it, uh, 1991 Alton Golf Club, which is a, a, a golf club in the Birmingham area. Now, I'm really pleased about this because it's actually going back to the golf club. Somebody's purchased it, and it sold for £13, and it's going back into a display cabinet in the golf club. So really happy with that. Next up, if you watched my film on how to restore antique copper, brass and bronze, you'll recognize this item. This is the copper chamber pot that I uh, removed the exterior staining from. I didn't polish it. Um, and I achieved, this was part of a, a, a couple of purchases, so uh, I accepted a, a, a job lot price and so I'll probably allocate 
a sale value of um, £25 for it. I think I was hoping for a bit more when I made the film, but with the downturn in sales, my priority is shifting stock, get the money in, and then I can reinvest that in more in more stock moving forward. So that was the antique solid copper chamber pot, which will be used as a planter now, I hope anyway. <laughs> um, and that sold for £25. Uh, along with that, I sold a silver plated Ianthi candelabra. Three sconces. Sconces are the uh, where you insert the the candles themselves, and it had a grapevine base design. So it's quite low, um, and slightly unusual. Not so many of these around. So I will allocate a sale price of fifteen pounds to that. Um, next up, this has probably gone to uh, a fellow dealer. It's a vintage folding wooden corner display unit with three locking shelves. So it can be folded flat for transport. Perfect if you're selling at a market or a fair and you want to give some height to your table. Solid wood, uh, definitely vintage, probably 1960s, 70s maybe. And I achieved a sale price of £29 for that particular item. Now it's important to remember these sale prices I am giving you exclude the shipping cost. So everything I sell has a shipping cost on top of that. Next up is a small vintage post-war I think, probably 1950s, and it's a vintage solid wood mahogany stool or plant stand kind of from that as I say that mid-century period very functional I don't know if the buyer will use it as a stool or as a plant stand but either way it's a really nice little item um, it's uh, stained it's not stained sorry it is it's a natural mahogany color and it has a, a polished finish it's only small um, well made solid construction functional and that's what that that's why that's been sold. Now, next up again, it was uh, I actually sold three items to one buyer, and um, I'll, the first one we go from one extreme to the other. So this was a hand painted tiny little well, it's an old tobacco tin, and it's been hand painted by a sign writer with the inscription "Tattoo Needles." So it's just a bit of fun, really. Um, unless, of course, the buyer wants to keep his tattoo needles in it. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't going to ask. And that sold for £15, I'll allocate to that. Because as I say, again, this was one of three in a job lot. So that sold for, uh, I'll allocate £15 to that. But as I say, hand painted, which makes it a little bit more unique. It didn't come off, in other words, it didn't come off a production line in China. In addition to that tattoo needles tin, this buyer purchased two really nice vintage, possibly antique, in fact, most likely antique, Gothic Revival candlesticks. So they're ecclesiastical in origin, no doubt about that. And they're gothic in style. And as you can see from the photographs, very clearly gothic in style. So they, I am going to uh, allocate for the two, a total of... Approximately, give or take a pound, seventy pounds. So they sold for approximately thirty-five pounds each, which I think for two antique Gothic Revival brass, solid brass uh, candlesticks, uh, and in fact, actually, slightly misleading you, uh, one of them has a steel column, so it's a brass base, brass sconce, uh, but it does have a steel. Uh, gilt column. I always check all of my candlesticks for magnetic properties to make sure or rule out uh, steel content. Obviously, if 
you watch my previous film, how to identify copper, brass, bronze, and so on, that you'll know that um, solid brass or copper or bronze will have little or no magnetic properties which you get from uh, ferrous content. So in other words, if it's a steel column that has been has a gilt covering of brass or copper, then the steel in the column will you will be able to attach a magnet to it and you will definitely get a sense of magnetism even if the, the magnet doesn't stick. So that's how I identified that the uh, column on this particular candlestick was steel and it had been uh, it had a gilt brass finish to it. So moving on, the next item, very nice antique copper platter or tray, if you like. Um, definitely antique, certainly late 19th century, possibly early 20th century. It did have two handles either end, so it was a serving platter, perhaps to bring uh, your roasts to the table back in the day. So, And, and it may well have been um, silver plated originally as well, because a lot of these antique copper platters or trays or serving trays were originally silver plated and over time they've been polished so much started the silver plate started to rub off and then people remove it and what you're left with is the base metal of the platter or tray which in this case is copper but still very nice functional and decorative item brilliant for displaying fruit or flowers or whatever really. So, and I achieved 25 pounds for that. Now that's reasonable because of the, I wouldn't call it damage, but the loss of the handles at either end, you can see the, the original rivets where they were attached. So um, it was, as you would call, distressed really in, in, uh, in one sense. So 25 pounds for that, quite happy with that. Uh, next up, an antique vintage Japanese lithograph of a quail. In fact, it's a chromo lithograph or an art print. And uh, this sold in the ornithology uh, category on eBay. Now, surprisingly for such a beautiful print, I didn't get very much for this at all. Got £8.50, which is probably roughly the going rate. And uh, I was happy to take that offer. So £8.50 for it. It had got a mount around it. I've got two or three others if you're interested and they're in the shop and they can go for similar price. Next up we have a uh, Murano Italian organic bowl or ashtray, mid-century, red and clear glass and uh, the uh, it's a Sommerso type, S-O-M-M-E-R-S-O, -S -S -O, Sommerso. And with my brummy accent, that's the way to uh, say it. Probably not. Let me know in the comments below. Give me the phonetic uh, spelling of it. And this, uh, this was paid for uh, a week or so ago, but I'm still waiting for the buyer to collect this. It is what it is, really. Typical of the period. 60s, 70s. And no chips or cracks. And I achieved, took an offer... Again, to move it on of £22.22. And, 22 and for those of you who are wondering why the heck 22 pence, well, it's just because I regularly drop the price of my items every week by 1%. And that can give me slightly unusual asking prices. It doesn't bother the buyers in the slightest. If the price is right, they'll just buy it. And don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, there is a shipping cost on top of all of this. However, <laughs> it's not a very good example to uh, remind you of that because this uh, the buyer has decided to collect this when he's next in Birmingham. Right, next up we have a vintage French butcher's brass balance or scales, hooks at either end, nice decorative piece of kitchen alia. Uh, and that sold for £18. Solid brass. I'm not sure it would be functional as such. I mean, it is working, but uh, probably more decorative. I don't know what the buyer's going to do with it. Um, 
and that sold for £18. Next up we have, this is really good working stock for me. If you ever you see them when you're out and about, buy them, get them listed. Brass chamber stick. Uh, this is a vintage one with a scalloped edge, bit of decorative detail there which um, makes it stand out from the crowd a little bit. Certainly isn't uh, antique 19th century or even 20th century, but I would, uh, I would definitely identify it as vintage. Uh, and uh, as I said, pick them up if you see them out and about, and they can sell, not necessarily this type, but the, the antique vin uh, or even um, traditional vintage style. Chamber sticks can sell for, Obviously, it all depends, doesn't it? You know, if you've got a 17th century one, it's going to sell for a lot more than a, a late 19th century one. But your average late 19th, early 20th century, solid brass chamber sticks, and even better if you have the snuffer with it, and they can sell for a 25, 30, 35 pounds, depending on the age, quality, and makeup. Next up, uh, this was a nice sale. Uh, this is, oh yeah, did I mention that the uh, chamber stick, the brass chamber stick sold for £13. So next up we have a solid brass jam pot with a folding steel handle. This sold for asking price and at the time that was £44. They're very popular as planters and I suppose if you were making jam, well, you could still use it, no doubt about that. So that sold for £44 plus shipping, very heavy, so uh, the shipping wasn't cheap, but it is what it is. Royal Mail dictate that price. I only use Royal Mail now, by the way. Um, I don't use any of the uh, other couriers. I've just had too many problems. Touch wood so far. I've had no problems with Royal Mail or Parcel Force. <clears throat> so... Very happy with their service at the moment. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but to date, at least I know it's going to get there. And it's all signed for delivery as well. Um, I use generally use second class signed for delivery via Royal Mail. Okay, now, the uh, this next uh, buyer, job lot of five items. So I'll run through these pretty quickly. First item was a uh, vintage album, LP if you like, uh, vinyl record or magazine rack. Two compartments and it has a wooden base with brass legs and one half of the frame is brass and the back half of it, if you like, is uh, steel wire. So that's very popular, incredibly popular. Um, Actually sold it in the end for uh, £32. I wanted a bit more for it, to be honest, but because the buyer purchased five items, then I was happy to give them a good discount. So that sold for £32, and I think it's really attractive, great for your albums, your vinyl, your vinyl collection. Next up, they also bought, uh, one, one extreme to the other, they bought a fantasy skull. Uh, which uh, at first I thought might have been cold cast bronze, uh, but I, I actually believe it's uh, it's resin and it states that in the listing, and it's a skull but made up of lots of little skulls. Hopefully you can see that in the photographs I'm posting or editing in, and uh, I probably sold that I don't know for sort of around. 10 or 12 pound. The whole of the job lot was 89 pounds for, for these five items. So probably around 10 or 12 pounds for that. Next up, they bought a vintage cast iron wren or robin. And it's a lovely little uh, trinket bowl because you can take the top off the robin or the bird. Um, so great for putting your rings in if you're washing up or, or on your dressing table. A decorative. Vintage, probably vintage more than antique, I think. Uh, but uh, who knows, it could, it could well be early 20th century. But a lovely little item. Again, a lot of watches. Nobody was 
biting, so to speak, I think it's this cost of living crisis and eventually had an offer in uh, as part of this job lot and took it. Next up as part of this job lot is a an aluminium pendant light, always popular for kitchens, caves, whatever, studios, or even for use as a photographic light shade, I guess. This sold for, I always sort of take about roughly 15 pounds for these. You can pick them up quite cheaply if you see them about at uh, market or fairs. And, uh, but in that way, you can always offer the buyer a good deal as well. So that's what I did. Nothing more to say about that really, just a nice functional aluminium, vintage aluminium light shade. And the final item in their job lot is a uh, vintage Seba silver plated squirrel trinket nut bonbon dish from the 1960s. Silver plated, as I say. Uh, nice decorative item. Again, great for trinkets like your rings, again, when you're washing up or whatever, I don't know. Or for general little knickknacks on a hall table. Nice little uh, decorative squirrel as a handle so you can pick it up. Uh, and that uh, that went to the buyer, the same buyer. So for all those five items, they they I think they got a good price, eighty nine pound. And they're collecting. It worked out quite well. They're actually travelling down from Scotland to for various reasons, and they can call in and pick them up. So um, that worked out quite well. They saved on the shipping, and I moved five items on. Next up, uh, I sold an antique amber syrup bottle. And originally it was made by the Glycerophosphorus Co. Acidus Huxley. <laughs> well, if you know what the heck that is, let me know in the comments below, will you? But uh, it's definitely an antique amber syrup bottle with an old cork in it. It is empty, definitely empty and that sold for £15, which again, I think was a good price for the buyer, and it enabled me to make small profit and move it on. You've always gotta be careful how you package them, obviously. You almost need to go over the top, really. Glass, bottle, you know, courier. In this case, raw mail, so hopefully it'll get there. Um, but I always uh, bubble wrap, then card, around it, then bubble wrap again, and then in a box with uh, void fill all around it. So it's very, very secure. The box is rock solid, and um, the actual bottle itself securely wrapped up right in the center of it. No no chance at all of, of moving or, or uh, hopefully uh, getting damaged in any way at all. Having said that, of course, I've now attempted fate and it's going to arrive in pieces, isn't it? I'll let you know if it does. Hopefully not. Touch wood again. Right, we're getting towards the end now. Um, another buyer bought a couple of items, uh, two little um, bud vases, one antique, one vintage. First one, very nice antique copper bud vase, engraved, so I think, um, oh yeah, there's also signs of the original silver plate. Neo classical uh, design. It is distressed, as I say, because the base metal is copper, and you can see trace elements of the original silver plate. But highly decorative, uh, a very attractive small bud vase. And the second bud vase they purchased is a vintage copper plated bud vase. So it's a white metal base with um, gilt copper uh, finish. Made in England, and it's in, I think that's the Art Nouveau style. So it's not from the Art Nouveau period, otherwise the price would have gone up considerably, but it is Art Nouveau in style. And for the two bud vases, uh, the buyer paid £35. Right, last but one item, a uh, little collectible here. And this is a vintage enamel Morris Oxford Wolseley Owners Club car badge. And that, yeah, it was made by Renamel of London. So I think it's got a little bit of age to it. Uh, it wouldn't have gone on the front of a car. I think it is a, an owner's club car badge. And that was one of the very few items I actually 
sold via auction. I don't normally sell by auction because if you set the price too low, you end up giving it away half the time. Very rarely does the price run, you know, with loads of bids. Uh, it, has, it has happened to me in the past. And when it has happened, it is in the automobilia or um, train, model trains, that kind of thing. So I thought I'd try the auction uh, with this uh, owner's club car badge uh, and just see, see how it went. Um, now, it went for the uh, maiden bid, in other words, the opening bid, which I, I knew it probably would. However, I did set the uh, minimum price at a sensible price and it sold for £18. So I think, again, the buyer's got a good, uh, got a good price and I've moved it on. Money in my back pocket, happy days. Right, and the last item now to finish off is a vintage distressed metal aluminium letter. And it could be a letter N, or if you turn it upside down, uh, a U, or vice versa. It's kind of gold tone. Shop salvage. These are popular. If you see them and they're genuine vintage uh, architectural salvage, and you can get them at the right price, pick them up because they do good work in stock. They do sell. You know, it might take you a few months to sell everyone, but uh, they do go in the end. There's always someone out there who wants the letter for their initials for their name or uh, for their partner, whatever, um, put on the wall. So that sold and I achieved 15 pounds for that. As I say, it wasn't really, it wasn't antique and it was an aluminium letter, nice condition. Um, slightly distressed, but that adds to the overall quality, I think. Uh, when I say the quality, the decorative quality of it. And that's your lot. So that's in some of the items I've sold in the first couple of weeks in August. Um, baking up. It's got to be 35, 36 degrees today. Um, so I'm going to bring the film to a close now. I hope you enjoyed that. As ever, please like, comment, subscribe. Share this video to anybody else who you think might be interested in antiques, vintage collectibles. That helps promote the channel grow the community needs to be done so please please do that and if you have watched it give us a like you know because that helps the ebay algorithm to promote the channel as well so yeah please you know it only takes a second millisecond to give the video a like and uh, that helps support the channel grow it and just gives me a bit of confidence that people are enjoying the films as well so that's all from me. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.